Hey guys, it's Kimberly from Keep the Tail Wagging and welcome to National Raw Feeding Week. And I am speaking today with Rebecca Rose of In Clover. In Clover is a brand that I often write about because I give not only the um, connect and chews to my dogs, which are a joint supplement. I prefer the chews because the dogs think that they're dog treats and they love them. And then also the Optigest, which is very white right now. So I'm going to actually insert a picture into here so you can really see it. And this is a prebiotic for um, dogs and cats, but I give it to my dogs. And today we're going to talk to you guys about the benefits of prebiotics and gut health for dogs. So thanks for joining me today, Rebecca. Oh, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. So, um, what is, or why is gut health so important for our dogs? Gut health is critical because so much of the entire health system starts in the gut. Uh, if you think about it as 70% or more of the immune system is housed throughout the digestive tract. The bacteria that are like little, um, little natural um, food factories in the gut, they're producing all of these vitamins and short chain fatty acids and all these healthy components that make an animal healthy. Or if you have a, a bad balance of bacteria in the gut, so you have the negative bacteria, then you can have a very, very sick animal. So our goal is to keep the balance of good bacteria up and keep the bad bacteria down. Fantastic, and can you tell me, what's the difference between a probiotic and a digestive enzyme? Okay, so two completely different things. So the digestive enzymes, although we think about them as being active, they're not living. They are actual um, chemicals that are naturally in our body, and they help to break down the good nutrients in our food. And so, for example, if you see a label and it has protease, the A-S-E at the end tells you it's an enzyme, and the prote at the beginning tells you it breaks down protein. So protease is an enzyme that breaks down protein. Enzymes are fragile, even though they're not living. And so if we heat them above about 120 degrees Fahrenheit, so think about that if you're baking cookies, you're much higher than 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's not a huge temperature. Then you deactivate the enzymes and they don't come back. Mm -hmm. And so enzymes are, they're, they're very active and they're very necessary so that we can break down the nutrients that are in our food. And we'll contrast that with a probiotic. So a probiotic is the, is the actual bacteria. So it's a microorganism, it's living, and it's beneficial to the system. So it might have a name like uh, lactobacillus. You've probably seen this in yogurt before or bifidobacterium. Every dog has a different type of um, probiotic, good bacteria that are in their system. So it's all very personalized to their own system. Interesting. It's so funny that you're saying this because I'm like, I learned something new. This is fascinating <laughs> stuff. I get so excited. So then we have prebiotics. And what I do know is prebiotics are the food for probiotics. But can you tell me more? Okay. So the prebiotics are naturally found in mother's milk. And so the natural system knows that in order to get um, a baby animal healthy, that you need to have this food for their own specific good bacteria. So that's what the prebiotics are. They're the food for the good native beneficial bacteria. So in a natural system, a puppy or a kitten would be nursing, they would receive the prebiotics, it would develop the good bacteria in their gut, and that would make their immune system develop and healthy. So, so that's what we have in a perfect system. Now, of course, as our animals get older or they're exposed to foods that don't have any, um, you know, that have been cooked out, you want to make sure that they have enough of the food for their own natural native beneficial bacteria. So that's when you would supplement with a prebiotic. Interesting. Probiotic, not living. So, and that explains why we see so many um, dogs coming out of the shelter system that aren't as healthy 
because they're lacking that really first initial ingestion of prebiotics or they don't get it as long. Correct. And that's really important because you want them to, you want their intestine, intestinal tract to be, um, to, to be seeded with these really good bacteria. The, think of the prebiotic like the fertilizer to keep the pre, those good bacteria growing and healthy and to keep the balance of the good bacteria high so that the bad bacteria can't overtake the system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, and that's basically what I saw happen with Rodrigo, where the bad bacteria just really overtook the system. And as a result, he had allergies, joint issues, you know, chronic ear infections, digestive issues, just a long litany of issues. And even switching to raw, even though it helped him tremendously, it didn't really cure them. And yeah, that's basically how I discovered Optigest was in my research of trying to help him and understanding, you know, that 80% of our immune system is in the gut. Um, I found Optigest online and saw the reviews and people were talking about how it really turned their dogs around. So now all of my dogs get Optigest. So when it comes to all of these, the way all of these things work together, you know, do things like, you know, goat's milk, raw goat's milk, you know, yogurt, do, do they have enough of the um, probiotics and digestive enzymes that our dogs need? So the, the raw milks, whether they're from goat or sheep or from cow, they would include the um, digest, same digestive enzymes that are in Optigest, and they would include something completely different. So they would include, as far as the living piece of it, they'll include the bacteria that are native to the goat or the sheep or the cow. And so those will be different, very different than what is um, native in your dog or what's native in my dog. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the fermented products such as kefir or goat's milk are really high in natural whole food minerals and um, vitamins, and they're a really healthy additive to your pets, a supplement to your pet's diet. I think that the bacterial part of it though, because it's coming from a goat or a sheep or a cow, it's not the same strains that would be naturally found in the dog. So what you want to do instead is you want to feed their native natural good bacteria. You don't want to introduce the foreign bacteria and hope that they overtake the digestive system. The digestive tract is like a it's like a PVC pipe. So it has a limited length and in dogs it's short, shorter than in humans, and it's sticky on the inside. And so that inside is where the bacteria grow and they adhere, stick to that digestional that pipe. And so what you want to do is have all the good native bacteria stuck to the inside of the digestive tract, fed by the prebiotic. And so when they do, they get, you know, salmonella or a foreign strain of bad bacteria into their system, they can just flush it through. Mm -hmm. You don't want to replace their good native bacteria with good um, goat bacteria because it's a different bacteria. Right. And so that's where prebiotic, as far as populating the digestive system, is a little more elegant solution. Mm -hmm. And things like kefir and goat's milk are really good at giving good vitamins and minerals in a whole food format. Right. Oh, thank you for explaining that difference because that makes me understand um, Rodrigo's system a lot better and why just giving him kefir, um, although it helps him, it doesn't really cover the gut issues. It's sort of just an additional thing, but not the actual answer. So I know you and I emailed back and forth about um, the study that showed that prebiotics were found to um, help with weight loss. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, th this is an interesting, um, an interesting thing to explain why it's so important to have good bacteria in the gut. If you're a dog or if you're a cat or if you're a human, if you're, you know, anything, you, you want to make sure that the bacteria, the population is really healthy because what happens is when you switch that balance. And so instead of having more of the good personalized bacteria, you have the bad bacteria in the gut. 
it's called um, something is, that's called dysbiosis. And what that means is just you have an out of balance system. You have more of the bad bacteria in the system. The bad bacteria, they actually create calories in the colon. So the last part of the digestive system. So in addition to taking in the calories from the food that the animal is eating, they're also, they have these bad bacteria who are generating calories in the gut. And now you have double. <laughs> you have the, the calories coming in from the food and then you have the calories in the gut. So when people tell you, oh my gosh, I can't imagine feeding my dog or cat less because I'm not feeding them that much. It may be simply that their gut bacteria are so far out of balance that the bacteria are actually creating a caloric system. See, and uh, what's so interesting about that is when Rebecca sent me this article and I wrote a blog post about it, which I found interesting, Sydney is, my dog is overweight and I have been struggling with her weight for years and I just can't, I walk with her, I cut back her food, I do all the things I'm told to do. I'm actually even, I've worked with someone who specializes in canine fitness who gave me ideas on what I can do, nothing, no movement in the weight. I started adding um, Optigest to her morning and evening meal every single day. And within two weeks, I put her on the squale, squale, scale and she dropped two pounds. Wow. And it's just, yeah, and it, it's one of those things where I had no idea. I didn't know what, and that's what you said was, yeah, I can't imagine cutting back her food in, even more. She's, you know, she's now 83 pounds. She dropped from 85 pounds. I'm trying to get her down to 75 pounds. And I had no idea like what to do. She's had blood work. She does not have a thyroid issue. She's, I've seen three vets and all of them say she's healthy. There's no reason why she shouldn't be losing weight. It wasn't until your email that I sort of like a light bulb went off and I started doing this and she doesn't have the telltale signs of an unhealthy gut. So mm -hmm. this is not something that you want to grab when your dog is sick. It's just mm -hmm. something that your dog should have. Mm -hmm. Right. So about one thing that when we were emailing back and forth, I asked you about the dosage and you're the one that told me to do it in the morning and the evening. Why is it that twice a day? Because you want to give the Optigest with the food. And, and this is really important because with the enzymes, when you give enzymes with food, the digestive enzymes will break down the nutrients in the food and allow the body to efficiently absorb those nutrients. Interestingly enough, if you give enzymes in between feeding, it will decrease cholesterol. So it will start to work on the fats that are in the blood. And so for this particular purpose, where we want healthy digestion overall, you want to give it in the morning and in the evening, assuming that you're feeding twice a day. Yes. If you feed frequent small meals, give it frequently with the small meals. That's fantastic. And this, there's no need to let it sit for 20 minutes like with other supplements. There isn't. And, and the fun science fact is that if you do, so if you're feeding a raw diet and you have a thawed raw um, patty or, or um, piece of meat there, and then you put the Optigest on and you just let it sit and you forget about it, it will start to pre-digest the meat in the bowl. And that will mean that it will just get a little bit soupy in the bowl. And that gives you an indication that the enzymes are working and that's what's happening in the body. It's not necessary to go through that pre-digestion step, but it's kind of cool to see that, yeah. oh my gosh, this is really breaking down those proteins and those starches and all that, those healthy, good nutrients is breaking them down in the bowl. No, oh, that's so fantastic. So I want to say thank you so much for joining me today and explaining all of this because for me, you know, as a raw feeder, it's so hard to get this information out there because there's so much information out there. So I really appreciate your time. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much for inviting me today. I appreciate that. And for you guys, if you guys want to try OptiJest, I will put the link right here where you can go to the site and buy it. And if you use the code KTTW10, you can save 10% off of your order. So this is definitely something you want to try. So thank you, Rebecca. All right. Thank you.